This category of short teachings is not meant to address every question on the topics covered, but intended to encourage us to truly do what Paul said, test everything, and even test that which has been passed down from the church fathers. We understand the personal struggle with considering the thought how one could be wrong, especially when it comes to theology. And because of that, whether we acknowledge it or not, we dig our feet deeper into our current position to give no room to consider any other perspective. And while we all admit we're to constantly be growing in our knowledge and understanding of the Word and in our relationship with our Heavenly Father, when it comes to what we already know, well, it's just hard to imagine you could be wrong. We get it. But what we don't realize is that can be what keeps us from growing deeper in the knowledge and understanding of the Word. So, as you go through this category of teachings, we ask you to not defend your current view, but to reason with the full counsel of Scripture. And that leads us to our topic for today. But Paul said, A common response when telling someone we pursue the Torah is, But Paul said the law was done away with. Or some other similar response that starts off with the words, But Paul said. Which leads me to a question. Have you ever been misunderstood? Ever? Have you ever typed something out and had someone misunderstand what you wrote? We all have at one point or another. You may have even had people misunderstand you when you said something that you thought was plain and simple, but you had to immediately clarify your point. But if someone heard you say something that they know opposes the way you believe and live, then they would immediately know they misunderstood your words. But if they didn't know you personally, then they would be left to that misunderstanding that opposes what you believe and live, thus believing you said something that goes in complete contradiction to what your lifestyle declares, thus believing you believe and live a completely different lifestyle. Now, Being that the fact that Paul isn't around for us to ask him questions, we're left to dig into the scriptures for clarification on just what Paul said. So, what was being said about Paul compared to what we know about Paul in his day? Consider Acts 21. Acts 21 verse 20. When they heard this, they praised God. Then they said to Paul, You see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed, and all of them are zealous for the law. They have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or live according to our customs. What shall we do? They will certainly hear that you have come. So do what we tell you. There are four men with us who have made a vow. Take these men, join in their purification rites, and pay their expenses, so that they can have their heads shaved. Then everybody will know there is no truth in these reports about you, but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law. First, please note how thousands of Jews had come to faith in Yeshua and were zealous for the law. We'll come back to this a little later. But if Yeshua did away with the law, why would the disciples be excited about this? Second, these Jews were informed Paul was teaching Jews who lived among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, the law. So right here we see two important details. The Jews coming to Yeshua in Jerusalem are excited about the law. And there were rumors that Paul was preaching against the law. However, it's very important to note how we see these rumors weren't true and Paul was in fact living in obedience to the law. So rumors were being spread about Paul that he was preaching against the Torah. But those rumors were false. 
In fact, consider how Peter confirms this in 2 Peter 3.16. Starting with verse 15, bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do other scriptures, to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you already know this, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawless men and fall from your secure position. So even Peter notes right here how Paul's letters were hard to understand and people were distorting them. Then Peter warns to not be carried away by that error of the lawless men, misrepresenting Paul. So, how many are still misrepresenting Paul today? And remember, Paul was living in obedience to the law. I know many would say that the verses back in Acts 20 about Paul being obedient to the law and the Jews who were zealous for the law was simply because they were Jews. Jews are supposed to follow the law, right? But if that's the case, why did Paul tell the Gentile converts in Ephesus that there was only one Lord, one faith, one baptism? So, how can Paul be saying this? I mean, if the Jews were following the law and the Gentile believers didn't have to follow the law, there wouldn't be one faith. There would be two. The thing is, Paul is actually giving us what the Torah says in Numbers chapter 15. Verse 15 says, The community is to have the same rules for you and for the alien living among you. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. You and the alien shall be the same before Yahweh. The same laws and regulations will apply both to you and to the alien living among you. And this is why Paul encouraged all the Gentile converts in Corinth to follow his example, as seen here in 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. And he informed all the Gentile converts in Philippi to follow his example as well, as seen here in Philippians 4.9. He told them this because he knew what Numbers chapter 15 says. There really is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, just as it was back then. The one faith is the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and written down through Moses. The same faith Paul was living. So even though there were people taking Paul's writings and twisting them into the air of the lawless, Paul preached the law, lived the law, and encouraged all to follow his example in doing so. But just as Peter warned back then, how many are taking what Paul said and interpreting it into the error of the lawless today? I know this may be difficult for some to hear, but we have to follow the teachings of Jesus, Yeshua, who exemplified and taught the Torah and not the teachings passed down from men. Please, don't seek to defend your view. Seek the truth by reasoning with the whole counsel of Scripture. Shalom.